I think this is going to be an incredibly significant uh, discovery. This is an animal unlike any other living or extinct. Spicomelis, I think, is going to be one of the strangest dinosaurs that we've ever discovered. We're here in the Middle Atlas Mountains of Morocco to try to find more of some really exciting dinosaurs uh, that we uh, first discovered um, a couple of years ago. We have this specimen at the museum called Spicomelis, and we described it as the world's oldest ankylosaur and the first ankylosaur from Africa. It had a really, really, really odd morphology. It, it, it had ribs in which the armour was actually fused to a rib. And this is very, very strange. So mo in most of our armoured dinosaurs, we have uh, spikes and plates and, and, and armour that just is sort of embedded in the skin um, and isn't attached to the, the, the bones of the body. But this animal has armour attached to its body and that's totally weird. We don't see that in any animal living or extinct. I was able to trace the fossils back to this site here. I got in touch with um, a colleague who works in France, um, who's a Moroccan, and this person pointed me towards Professor Driss Oash, who is an expert in the sedimentology of the rock. So that means he has spent his career studying the environments in which these dinosaurs are living in. So in 2018, Susanna email because the museum has des ossements of the dinosaurians in provenance of the Moyen Atlas in Maroc. I've been collaborating with Driss here in Morocco in the University of Sidi Mohamed Ben Abdullah for about five years now, working on the rocks here, um, working on the, some of the specimens that, that we bought commercially. This is my second trip out here to try to uh, understand uh, more about the, the, the bones, actually try and find some fossils ourselves. The first thing we need to do is to, is to remove all the rock. And of course, you know, when we're far above where we know the bone layer is, we can go pretty, pretty, pretty hard with pickaxes. So we, we did that for a couple of days. And um, all the, uh, the big, strong people wielded pickaxes and removed about two and a half metres of sediment that, that they got through in two days. Now what we're doing is we're going much more slowly because we're getting close to the bones. And in fact, we found a bone this morning. So we know we're at the right level. This is an animal that is covered in armor. So its back has all these spikes on it. So, you know, if, if you show me a, 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 a fallen bone, I know where the fallen bone goes on the body, but you show me a great big long spike and I really don't have any idea where that bone fits. So what we're trying to do is figure out exactly how those bones fit together. And this is really, really important because we're trying to understand an animal that, frankly, we have kind of no frame of reference for understanding at all. This is an animal unlike any other living or extinct. And so what we hope to find is that uh, parts of the animal are in the right place, uh, lying out like it died. That's pretty rare in the fossil record. We almost never get that, but you never know. Uh, so that's what we, we hope that we can find. Now, the thing is that many of these bones in this environment, you can see um, behind me here that the quarry is actually, based, it's in, it's in a, a, a channel a river channel and flash floods come down here and so what um, Mohammed, our colleague who's been working here has done is every time a flood has come through he's actually been removing the specimens before they get washed away that's great because we've still got them but the problem is we don't know where they fit so we're hoping that we'll have those fantastic specimens that Mohammed's found but we'll also have more information from what we're doing as well. I'm Richard Butler I'm a professor of paleobiology at the University of Birmingham and we're part of this collaboration together with the Natural History Museum and the University from Fez. I think we, we knew we were going to come here and that there, there were going to be some dinosaur fossils, but I think what we've seen here is actually, it's been completely mind-blowing. It's been way beyond what we thought we were going to find during this week. I think we've only really scratched the surface. There are some absolutely incredible fossils that are going to reveal a huge amount of new information about the dinosaurs that lived here 160 million years ago. I hope that we're going to have some incredible scientific discoveries. I hope we're going to find lots more dinosaur material. We're going to understand much more about the types of dinosaurs that lived here, the ecosystems in which they were living. But I think there's also a much broader thing that we want to get out of the work here, which is about capacity building in Morocco. So this, we're really working genuinely closely in, in partnership with our local collaborators. And we want to help them to establish the facilities that allow them to develop this site, prepare the fossils, 
and ultimately house those fossils in a museum here in Morocco. For us, this is a really, really long ongoing project and what we really need to do, and really my aim for this project, is that we actually set up a vertebrate paleontology lab here in Morocco. And, you know, we're coming over here, but what I would like to do, you know, the, the fossils are absolutely staying in Morocco and um, they're not going to be housed in a museum in anywhere else in the world. They will remain here in Morocco. Our hope would be that um, through raising the profile of the fossils here, through helping to, to build capacity, so through training um, local collaborators, through setting up facilities, that will um, help to grow Moroccan paleontology. Each country must preserve its patrimony, the fossils, etc. We can't do it. They are dead once and for all. But we want to preserve them. And those who want to visit them come to the Maghreb. We are not here. Le, le, le matériel d'Yenna, au lieu de chercher le, le, le Paris ou le Londres ou le, 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 le Miami ou le Hada, il va quand même faire le Maghreb là, où les vrais chevaux y vivent. Mais les scientifiques, ils ont tous les hommes qui vivent, ils croient qu'ils ont fait le Maghreb avec Suzanne, avec Richard. So Spike Camellus, I think, is going to be one of the strangest dinosaurs that we've ever discovered. It's got unbelievable armor. It has these bizarre spikes fused to the ribs. It has these crazy elongate spines which seem to come out of what might be a, a collar around the neck. It's utterly unlike any other dinosaur we've ever found. Um, and so I think it's gonna be um, something that will really capture the imagination of people around the world who are interested in dinosaurs. I think it's also actually gonna tell us a lot about the early evolution of a major group of dinosaurs, the ankylosaurs, which are these armored tank-like dinosaurs. And, Spicomelis is the oldest uh, representative of that group. So I think this is going to be an incredibly significant uh, discovery. And what we had before was just this single rib. We're now going to be able to start to build up a picture of much of the skeleton. It's been a couple of years since we came back from Morocco having uh, found all the Spicomelis material. We wanted to bring the dinosaur out of Morocco to get it prepared here. That proved incredibly logistically complicated. So in the end, we decided to um, set up a prep lab in Morocco. And actually, that was always our plan. Um, it just sort of brought forward our plans a bit. So we've completely prepared the specimen now. Kelta and Ahmed are fully fledged preparators. We have a lovely prep lab and we've described the specimen. We found some really cool things about the specimen. We've got this incredible spiky collar with metre long spikes. We've got evidence that the animal had a tail weapon, which is really unusual because we thought that was something that evolved much later in ankylosaur history. And we've also got this sort of shield that sits over the hip region with these enormous long spikes on that as well. And again, this is something that we thought was restricted to a small group of ankylosaurs, but now we know, thanks to Spicomelis, that it was much more broadly distributed and probably evolved very early on in ankylosaur evolutionary history. So we think that Spicomelis was using its armour, perhaps for display, maybe to show off to try to attract a mate. It's been five years since we first uh, discovered that rib in a fossil shop in Cambridge. Um, it feels like it's been a long process, but I'm thrilled that we've got to where we are now, that we have um, a really nice skeleton, and I'm really looking forward to um, the future discoveries that we make in these rocks in Morocco.